Hi, it's Jane here from craftwithjane.co.uk and today I am making you, uh, or making with you, this cute little um, tea light candle box um, and uh, it's got a little wrap around belly band um, and it's got some tea lights in there which are see-through little box with a piece of acetate here. Um, I got this idea from a gift that I was given actually, a shop bought uh, tea lights, fancy ones. I think they um, came from um, Marks and Spencers actually. I don't have them anymore because I've uh, used them, but I did deconstruct the box to be able to uh, bring you this project today. So, oops, I've just knocked one of my beautiful jewels off, so I'll pop that back on just there. Oops, didn't want to go on. There we go. So yes, yeah, so I'll be bringing you um, this project today. So I do get quite a lot of my project ideas from gifts that I receive, which I then deconstruct the boxes for. Um, so that's what I've done here. So the paper that I'm going to be using today is this really sweet um, Pansy Petals designer series paper. Um, so I've used it on this box just here and I will be using it on the next box. So I'm going to do this one with some green tea lights. So these are from um, a Scandinavian store in the UK, um, found throughout most of uh, Europe and probably America as well, because uh, they do take over the world and they do amazing flat pack furniture. Uh, so I bet you can guess where they're from. And these are, I think they're apple scented or pear scented, but they're quite lovely. And my project's going to be green today. So although the green doesn't match exactly, uh, the are close enough and because they're going to be covered over with a little disc. So this is uh, the soft succulent uh, cardstock and this is for the base, the base of the box uh, just here, the two light box. This is an eight and three quarters by four and a quarter. So I will be doing a blog post with this and you'll be able to get all my measurements in metric and also these imperial measurements on that post. So please check it out. It's in the links below this video. So on the long side, I'm going to score it at half because I'd just like to make this box a little bit reinforced. So I'll do that again. So that's half and one and a quarter. I'm going to do this on all four sides. So when you're making a box like this, so I made it originally to the specifications of the box that I'd had from as a gift from a supermarket. And um, it was a bit too big for my tea lights because my tea lights were a bit smaller. So a good starting point is making sure that you have a nice snug fit because there's nothing worse than the rattling around. So you effectively need to measure them. And then I always do a little recce just to make sure they look like they're going to fit in my box here so this middle portion is where they're going to sit and they look like they might fit in there so fingers crossed so yeah that is uh that is to the start of my uh, scored lines there so I'm, i always turn it over where you've got the bump and that's where i'm going to cut so i'll do that now so i'll get my uh, paper snips out and um, this is a typical box construction so i'm going to be mitering as I go along as well. I'm going to get rid of some of these end bits to start with. So that's there. Same here. This is going to be like the reinforced tab bit that goes inside. So I'm happy cutting away these four bits just here. And then I'm going to create the tab section here. So I'm going to cut in just here. Take off a little bit. And then I'm going to miter into these bits just here. I'm also going to miter in just there. Same principle here. That's it. I'm going to cut off about just under the score line and I'm going to miter into the corners just to make a neat, neat little fit. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. Take away about a third. 
I will lay the box down flat for a second uh, once I've done all the cutting before I um, use my bone folder so that you get the basic structure because I um, some of you have mentioned that you quite like that in uh, when you've commented and um, messaged me directly to say that uh, it helps you when you're creating your structure and knowing where to cut so you can see that's my basic shape that I've used just there so I'm going to uh, use my bone folder now and I'm going to fold in everywhere basically everywhere I need to so all of my score lines and now burnishing I keep a little a sort of book on my desk and I write down all of my ideas for projects in there um, and I do have a couple like I had some bath bombs uh, la uh not bath bombs yeah bath bombs and I also had a hot chocolate bombs and they came in really cute boxes so I've kept those boxes back and I'm hoping to reuse them at some point for design helping design some future projects so I'm going to use my Stamp and Seal Plus. So I prefer to use tear and tape, wet glue or Stamp and Seal Plus when I'm doing 3D projects. But it is very much a personal preference. Um, the reason I'm using my Stamp and Seal Plus today is because I do feel that um, when I'm doing projects with you or for you on, okay, on here, I quite like to be able to um, do them reasonably rapidly for you so you're not allowing I'm not allowing glue drying time um, and the stamp and seal is pretty effective and you can see it's got it's so strong and it's got a real ribbed sort of glue adhesive texture um, and it is super super strong I've not had anything come apart using the stamp and seal plus at all Okay, so you can see that I've done all the four reinforced strips on the inside, but the tabs I've done on the out outer side, and that's because I'm going to make the box structure with those. So I'm going to fold that in just like that. Oops, there we go. And then I'm going to press on the inside. I'm going to do that all the way around this box. There we go. So I've created the box structure, and now I'm going to push the sides in and create the reinforced section. Okay. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to really press down to try and give it a really sharp, uh, sharp shape to the box. There we go. So there we have our nice sharp shape. And I'm going to Moment of truth, I'm going to try and fit my four cute little, yeah, they fit lovely. So once I've got the um, little belly band on, that will keep that structure in a lovely shape as well. So that fits. There's not too much wriggle room. You want a little bit because the acetate's going to go on the inside as well, but um, that's perfect fit. Lovely, happy with that. So I'll take my four cute little um, tea lights out and I will show you how I made the little discs so there we go so I've used some of the pattern paper and I have actually pre-done mine here so I originally I cut out a circle punch uh, I used a circle punch for this but I do have dies as well that I could have used to cut this out um, and you really want to go anywhere from one and three eighths to one and a half I'm pretty sure this is a one and a half I folded it in half both ways and then I used a tiny punch um, actually a crocodile to cut out my little circle just here but if you've got um, a pick tool you could sort of um, make a little hole through the center there and then I used that as my template to do my four circles and then I'm just gonna pop up the wick and find my wick and try and center it so this is a one and a half and put my wick back down it sort of holds it in place there or thereabouts so these wicks are not 100% centered so you do sort of have to um, allow them to find their spot um, and they will then 
allow you to maneuver the uh, piece of paper. Now, it's very important when you're gifting this that you make sure that the people that you're gifting it to know that they need to remove the paper before they light the candles. So they're just there. So I'll pop those in ready. And then I will get my bone, uh, sorry, get my acetate out and my school board. And I'll do the acetate layer for you as well. So this is my piece of acetate, which is uh, actually measures seven and 11, is it seven and 11. So I've, I've cut this one, I actually cut this one on my uh, trimmer because it's got um, sixteenths on there. So it's seven and 11 sixteenths by three. However, I can score it on here because I'm just scoring it at three quarters all the way around. And I really enjoy scoring on this scoreboard. Um, I think it's a, one of the best scoreboards on the market. So I'm going to score. So this is acetate you're working with. So you do need to make sure you're doing a really good score because um, it's basic. It's, it's not cardstock. So you do need to make sure you're really scoring in deep. Just here. Lovely. I'm going over it twice in most places. So I'll just show you there. Um, that is the scoring there. I will, uh, I will fold it as well, um, and I will be using a bone folder. But for this part, I'm just going to loosely fold it before I use the bone folder, just to help me with my cutting. Perfect. So, just move my scoreboard out of the way, and. I will get my scissors back out. So you can try and glue acetate, but obviously it's always going to show it. So for me, um, I'll show you in the original, just here. This is what they had done in the gift that I had received. So they had cut away the corners and then they'd rounded the corners because obviously acetate can be quite sharp when you've cut it. So you do need to be quite careful with it. So I'm gonna mimic what, um, my, they did on my gift because I think it looks quite neat as well. So just here I'm going to cut away and try and be as straight as I can with this cutting uh, because obviously it's going to affect the finish look of the box. I figured that these would make lovely gifts for like uh, little birthday presents, you know, work colleagues, um, friends, uh, people like that. You could add it to a little hamper. If you're going to do something like a little treat hamper where you put like face masks and you know, something non non food or chocolatey, and can make a little like pamper hamper with it. So I have cut. Uh, all of my my four squares away. I'm going to now use my trio punch with my corner round on it. Again, one of my well used um, well well used uh, items that I've bought. So this my trimmer and my um, scoreboard. I use them almost daily. I would suggest, and you can get a nice round edge just there. So I'm going to do the same on this one, and I'm going to do repeat this whole process on all of the corners. And I'm looking to get that sort of rounded. This one didn't round as easily, as was as good actually, bear with me. Put that one back in. It's my fault, I think. Too distracted talking, there you go, a bit better. I'm gonna do that on all of them, all of the corners. So if you don't cut this really well, actually, you're gonna to struggle to get a nice rounded corner. Uh, so you've got a nice one there if there's a step or a lip anywhere it won't cut so well so i'm going to fold those bits in and then i'm going to do these side bits lovely once i've done this i will get my bone folder back in and i will make sure that i Full, scored all of the, sorry, burnished all of the four corners. That's lovely. Nicely, so that it creates that lovely 
lovely box lid with the um, really creased corner so they're nice and sharp. Perfect. And this is what helps give it the structure because it is a long thin box. Okay. picked a few bits of fluff up so you might want to give this a wipe before you give it okay pop that out of the way so this could be the tricky bit the first time you're getting it on so I <laughs> I mean this could take still take me a while but I basically try doing one corner to start with we need to do it flatter so I try and get one one of the uh, end pieces in and then start the side pieces and then I gently ease it and then I let it gravity help me a little bit with this end piece because the first time you're putting this in it kind of wants to go any which way but the way you want it to and I do have to there you go, gently uh, press so that's lovely there so you've got I've got a tiny bit of gape there and um, so once I put my um, belly band on that that will be absolutely fine and it almost trains it a little bit to sit in place as you can see it has done with this one because I made this one a little while back so I'm now going to do my belly band so I've got a piece of the matching DSP because I wanted it to look like it wasn't there that they were almost like floating flowers so this is five sorry this is a cardstock this is um soft soft succulent as well this is five and a half by one and a quarter inch and to start with I'm just going to sort of find roughly where I need to be putting my score lines so I'm, so you can sometimes score this off measurements but I prefer to make sure it fits and I don't want it to be too tight that it won't move so I'm going to gently find my score lines the natural way there we go, and then I'm going to burnish. So you definitely um, can measure this out if you'd prefer, if that if you're more comfortable with this. But I quite like doing it the way I've just shown you when I'm doing a belly band, because I feel like it allows for any deviations. And so I've burnished everywhere. So I'm just going to do a little double check, and yep, yeah, feel I feel very happy with that so if I do glue it on it will it does have some wiggle room as well there to move up and down perfect so I am going to pop some glue on the slightly longer piece here so I'm going to put this one on the outside just at the edge just there and I'm going to do the same on the inside for this one so there's no overlapping or flapping and then I'm going to put it on the box to to actually secure it there you go lovely so that is my belly band which does move up and down quite nicely and you can see it sort of um, holds the box in a nice sort of structured shape so I'm using the pansy patch um, stamp set and dies so I originally used the happy birthday there and I'm using the thank you on this one I stamped it in soft succulent I've also used the pansy dies which I keep on the inside on a piece of um, magnet sheet uh, there I've used these dies here to cut out the pansies from the DSP uh, to create this little um, feature on here as well so I you can see that I've used mini dimensionals for some of this so I'm going to work out where I'm going to place this and then I'm going to pop some of these underneath here to create a sort of a layered effect effectively so that there I might put that one just there I think that's quite sweet I could work with that so I'm gonna leave those there a second I'll take one off pop a little bit of the super strong seal uh, stamp and seal plus pop that one there which is where I had it and I'll do the same just here so we'll pop that one just there and double check I'm still happy yeah I'm really happy with that so then I'm gonna get my stamp and dimensionals which are just here. Again, absolute must have in any craft room is some form of dimensional. 
So I'm just going to double check where I need to place them. So I need them about here, about there, and another one just here. So I think that would hold it up. Do want any more? Possibly get away with another one up here, just like there. Yep, happy with that. So I'm going to take the backs off and because I do need to be very careful not to stick it on the acetate at, or the actual original box because we need this belly band to move up and down. And I'm going to pop that like that and then I'll just double check. Yep, perfect. And then to finish this project off, I'm going to use some jewels. So I'm going to, I've got this little bit left on my 2021, 2023 in colour jewels. This is my next packet to use. So I'm going to use some up here and they do coordinate with the soft succulent. So I'm going to use two of the soft succulents, one big, one small, which is, there we go, quite like that there. So that, my lovely crafting friends, is my cute little belly band to finish off my lovely gift of my um, tea lights in their own cute little box. So um, I'd be really interested to know which um, colour scheme you like the best. This is definitely a more subtle scheme. Uh, this is more bright and vibrant, um, but I think they both look really cute. So if you'd be happy to comment uh, to let me know which one you prefer. There are links below. So if you like any of the products you've seen today, I'd be honored if you chose me to be your demonstrator. If you shop with me, um, you can follow the uh, links below. If you'd like to join my team, again, links are below and I'll put some um, direct links to my shop for the products that I've used today. So I'm going to say bye for now. So bye everyone and happy crafting.